Good evening, everybody. Um, I was, whilst I was sat there, I was gazing out at the audience and wondering if I was the only person in here that's never actually been to Greece. I don't know if there's anybody else here. Um, certainly, the, the first one that, thought, that crossed my mind was whether I was the only person that didn't speak Greek, but then I thought that was probably even more ridiculous that I'd never even been to Greece. Um, which I guess makes my story even stranger, if you like. Um, many of you might have heard of um, the campaign that I did uh, earlier, uh, not earlier this year anymore, last year, um, where it wasn't necessarily, I must admit, originally just about Greece as such, but um, by about politicians in Europe and the way that normal people can be turned against each other to actually make one another think, oh, it's the, you know, it's the lazy Greeks, don't give them any money. And that was something that really started to annoy me as this narrative in the news carried on again and again. And as we waited for um, politicians to actually do something, we were going back and forth and back and forth and nothing was happening. Um, particularly um, that came to sort of affect me when we started to see images on the news of real people, old people not being able to get cash out of machines, young people without jobs and I wondered if there was maybe a different way that we could try and do something. Um, so I was sat at my dining table one evening and thought well you know 1.6 billion it's a, it's a big, big number but it's not that big if we break it down. Um, there's 500 million people in the uh, European Union. And my idea was that if we broke that down to just the three euros 19 per person in Europe, then what's that? About the cost of maybe a, a feta and olive salads or something like that. So I thought, why... I did, from the outset, I wanted this to be something where um, it wasn't just a pure donation. I wanted it to be a contribution. Um, that's something that's very important to me, that it's not just about giving money, that it's about trying to stimulate something. It's the opposite to austerity. By putting money into something, you're building for the future. So while this was €3.19 per citizen, it wasn't just a donation, it was €3.19 going into the Greek economy. And the way that I did, wanted this to happen was through this crowdfunding campaign. So for those of you that don't know about anything about crowdfunding, it is getting lots of people to put in a small amount in order to get a bigger amount. Um, one of the things that happens in crowdfunding campaigns is often that um, while you can donate your money and not get anything in return, um, you can also get a perk back. So I wanted my perks to be something um, something that one would connect with people across Europe as being ostensibly definitely Greek, but also something that they would want. So the perks that you could get in return, for example, for three euros you got a postcard sent from Greece. For, um, I think it was six euros, um, I would send you a feta and olive salad in the post. For 10 euros, I'd send you a little bottle of ouzo, and for 25 euros, a bottle of wine. Uh, for 5,000 euros, then you could have a holiday for two to Athens. Um, now, I thought all of this up at the dining table. This is still all in my head. Um, and I thought, do you know what? This is so silly that it might work. Um, so I just thought, do you know what, I'll have a go. Um, so what I did, I set up a Gmail account, I set up a Twitter account, um, Indiegogo, which is the crowdfunding platform, I set up an account with them. Um, I wrote a little bit of a story, so the little story that I've just told you there, that what, I, what my idea was. Um, and I sat at home late on a Sunday night and just started tweeting journalists that I'd searched and sit, saw and see that they'd, um, they'd been involved in, in, Greek, in Greece and Greek crisis. 
Um, and I tweeted them with a link to the page and just said, don't worry, I've got it sorted. <laughs> now, journalists, for those of you that know one or two, are very curious people. And they all started clicking on this link. Um, I didn't really think what might happen past that. Um, but I went to bed that Sunday night and woke up on the Monday morning and um, this happened, basically. Um, the first day wasn't quite so crazy. Um, it was only sort of um, the Huffington Post and Mashable that uh, got in touch with me. Um, but I started getting retweeted and um, my original tweet has now been retweeted something like 20,000 20, times. And journalists started contacting me. Um, eventually, later that evening, the number of people contacting me was just ridiculous. The number of people that were accessing the site was so much that it broke Indiegogo. It stopped working. I got my own dedicated engineer to fix the site, and they had to do a, a little hack on the site so that people could access it. And over the course of the next week, um, 108,000 people contributed to the site. Um, they pledged money up to 1.93 million euros. Um, and eight people actually contributed 5,000 euros to try and get this holiday. Um, <laughs> I made one small error and this was something I didn't really think through right at the beginning, and was, that was that I set the funding to fixed. What that means in crowdfunding terms is that if you don't reach your goal, everybody gets refunded. My goal was 1.6 billion, and as you can see, I was a little way off. However, over the course of this campaign, it did, it did much more than raise um, raised money, it raised awareness, and I got an opportunity to speak to these people. Um, I, was on, I was in the BBC studio, I, I think, ten times. I was on Al Jazeera, I was in the New York Times, The Guardian, The Telegraph. Um, a blacked out taxi picked me up and I spoke on Fox News, where I was spoiled for a fight because of being such a right-wing news company, and then they were lovely to me, and I was really disappointed. Um, but what I was able to do was to put across this message that, um, that austerity is not necessarily the best way to go about reviving an economy. It's definitely not the right way, in my, my opinion, and that we need to try and provide a stimulus. Um, I hope that that's also what Paolo is going to talk about um, shortly. Um, one short little story. My... One of the, I used to be a press manager, so whilst I was working at a shoe shop at the time, and when I was asked that, then the journalist loved it and it got repeated and repeated. I did have a little bit of a head start when it came to press. My very best friend in London works for BuzzFeed, and I rang him on the morning when everything went crazy, and I said, Jim, this has gone a little bit mad. What do you think I should do? And he said, hmm... To be honest, I wouldn't put your name to it. It's a bit base for us. I don't think we'll cover it. And I went, oh, OK. And then six hours later, his, he was working in Greece at the time, in Athens. His editor had asked him if anybody knew this man that was doing this thing in, uh, in London. And he had to say to his editor, uh, yeah, he's, he's my best mate. And he said, well, what the hell are you doing? Ring him now. So I must admit, one of my favourite parts among this whole campaign was actually my mate Jim having to ring me up and grovel and say, "We go on then, give us a line." Um, but yeah, throughout it, it was it was an amazing way to be able to to actually tell a different story. And I'd like to think that that the campaign if only a small amount, changed people's attitudes a little bit and hopefully resonated with other Greek people that, you know, there are people across Europe that care about them. Um, I think that psychological thing is almost as, can be as, almost as important as a monetary thing. It's very hard to kill an idea. Um, 
And with all this momentum behind me, then I wasn't defeated, and I started a second campaign. Um, I, I've already been asked once this evening, and I'm sure many of you are thinking, could Indiegogo have not changed it to, to just allow people to, to donate that money instead? And believe you me, I tried to make them do that. Unfortunately, they would not. Um, so I started a second campaign. Um, I knew that this time that actually it probably would work to some degree, so I set about trying to find somebody that I could work with. Um, this was where I found Desmos, and um, I've been asked, you know, how did you choose them? And there were, there were three criteria, really. Um, one, as I've already established, I don't speak Greek and don't know too much about Athens or Greece in uh, at all, so actually being able to speak to somebody in English was actually one of my first concerns. But actually, looking into many charities, there were two very strong reasons that I chose to um, contact Desmos and ask them if they'd potentially like a big chunk of money in the coming weeks. Um, the first was that they have such a fantastic network of connections across so many different charities. Um, that was something I certainly didn't have. Um, Desmos worked with such a broad spectrum from the, um, from the warmth um, campaign and working with people that either are in um, dire need of fuel or just blankets to the schools programs. Um, and that was something I couldn't just create overnight. Um, it was something that I really wanted to plug into. Um, the, one of the other things um, about Desmos um, was that they'd, they'd sort of done this sort of thing before and I needed somebody that, that could replicate um, the, the, what I wanted to do. That was taking something that was surplus, in this case it was, it was cash, but distributing it to where it was needed. Um, the other thing that was important to me personally was um, actually this going to stimulate something. Um, and also for me, again personally, that I wanted it to be about young people because I think, um, as Desmos are working with um, schools, I think actually one huge problem in Greece at the moment is unemployment of young people. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, unemployment runs at about 50% for 16 to 24 year olds. And this isn't just a problem you know, at this moment for those young people, but I think it, it could potentially store up trouble for the future where you have people who haven't got work experience, where they haven't got um, the skills that maybe when things do turn better, that there's nobody to actually f uh, fill those roles because for 10 years then they've been without those, that learning. Um, so the thing that I wanted to do was to make sure that this money went into the economy via people's wages. Um, we're, we've, we're, we've already employed um, one person with this money. Um, so the, sorry, the, the second campaign raised just short of 290,000 euros. Um, one apprentice, Irene, has been working with Desmos for a few months now, and there'll be another 15 working in charities across Greece um, throughout 2016. Um, could the ca campaign have gone better? Um, as I've mentioned, I could have done the flexible funding at the beginning. Um, more social media updates and the, the wider variety of content. What I say with that is I started a new job the day after this kicked off. So for about a week, I was working about 19 hours a day um, between running around different TV studios and radio studios and actually trying to <laughs> to like fill in contracts and be shown where the fire exits are and take on all this new stuff from a new job. Um, and logistics and capital. Um, actually, distributing bottles of wine and ouzo across Europe is a lot more difficult than I first imagined, um, as, as Desmos found out. Um, so perhaps in future, then, if you're ever going to do something like this, try to make it non-alcoholic. Um, one of the other things is um, actually working with that amount of money is um, quite difficult, especially when there's the threat of 
governments dipping into your bank account to take some of the money away from you. Um, so actually understanding for me that um, I needed to transfer this to your British bank account for the time being and we would use it as and when uh, the money was needed. Um, can you do the same? I think there's a few um, people in the audience today that um, are from the, the universities in, in London at the moment and maybe thinking that, you know, could I do something like this? Um, I think there's a few important things to remember here and that's that I started at my dining table with nothing, just this idea. Um, the internet has made the world a lot smaller, it's made processes a lot faster and actually you can do a lot very quickly. Um, you don't need a big chunk of money, you don't need um, a PR team behind you, you don't need any of these things, you just need a computer. Um, but think about what your story is. So if you're a charity and you want to connect with people, or if you're just an individual wanting to connect with just a small community, you need to be able to tell people why you're doing this, um, what your idea is, how it will help people, and really think that through. Um, give it your all. Um, I knew that this would be very hard work for the next week where I was running here, there and everywhere. Um, but you can't do these things by half. You've either got to do it or not. You've got to commit to it fully. And I knew that this um, experience would never come round again, and I really wanted to, to just go for it. Um, reach for the stars is a very cheesy line in there, and you must excuse me, but um, there's a little bit more behind it than just reach for the stars, and that's that if you do reach this high, if you get this high then actually that's still quite good. Um, my friend Jim, the guy who works for BuzzFeed, he was always amazed when his mother went to these village fates and um, they'd have a committee meeting about how they wanted to raise £100 to get some new curtains for the village hall. And he could never understand why they didn't just decide to try and raise £100,000 and get a brand new village hall and actually, even if they only got 10,000, then they could have three times as many curtains, they could have a new table, they could have um, wine for the next couple of years. Um, and I, I like that idea of just thinking big. Um, what's, the, what's the most ridiculous thing you can think of? Have a go at that. If it fails, so what? And believe in yourself, because it's something that I don't think I necessarily did myself at the beginning, but... Um, Doing something like this has given me a lot of confidence, not just in myself, but also in people. And that if you really do get that story right, and you connect with people, and you're sure that what you're doing is a good thing, then other people will join you. Um, and I'd like to think that this would inspire other people to try and do, if not the same, then something similar. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer some as well.